Now in today's episode we have a bit of a curveball as we go to Portimao for the third from last race of the season, round 21 out of 23 and essentially a bit of a wild card in terms of what to expect and something out of the ordinary. So before we go to Vegas, which is the next round, before we go to Abu Dhabi, we have to tackle Portimao. We don't really know what to expect here, so that could be really, really interesting. Now, guys, the last episode, go check it out. Every episode now is key, so spoiler warning, link in the top right, go watch it because, wow, we have a championship fight on our hands. Now, the big thing I want to talk about is, um, number one, the aerodynamics. Now, we cannot upgrade them any further. We need fabrication level three for that to really happen. We have level three everywhere else, but we need it on the aero to basically push on to the next level of development of the car. Luckily, we don't really need upgrades anymore. We're pretty much maxed out. Um, we're going to fight for the title pretty much with this car. So hopefully for next season, that happens. That aside, we choose a new rival, which I'm going to go for Checo Perez. And we now jump into the weekend. Now, no upgrades besides a minor one for the engine, but the big news, Lewis Hamilton is retiring from Formula One. It's technically the end of 2024 and Lewis is calling it a day. Alonso retired last season and now Hamilton's out. So we'll see what effect that has on the driver market into next season, which could be really interesting. Now, with that aside, we're going to jump into the weekend. And as you can see, we have rain forecast for the race. Quite a bit, actually. Pretty much half of the race is going to be in wet conditions and heavy rain conditions for at least two thirds of it. So it's going to be interesting and that should really spice things up as for... Other things, the updates, the uh, upgrade chart, we have currently no upgrades in the car. I don't know if we're going to get any more big ones on. I think we've got one more on the way for the brakes, which we're going to go on for Vegas. But after that, I think we're pretty much done. Red Bull, though, bring a massive upgrade package Ferrari as well. And uh, yeah, besides that, Mercedes, crucially, are unchanged. So no upgrades for them this weekend, which is the main thing we're looking out for. So into practice, uh, getting the car up to speed, shaking down and making sure we... Uh, find some pace early doors and it seems pretty good i'm not gonna lie we seem to have some good pace and this is a good track for us so tire wear pretty much average literally on the one percent mark fuel consumption 47 kgs so that's also about average and yeah overall car actually felt really good to drive we hit a decent amount of r&d points uh, no discounts for this one as i kind of had to save the engine a little bit as we are a bit tight on the engine situation so i'm trying to limit running as much as possible uh, but yeah with that we're going to jump into qualifying and we're going to put now all the pace to the test and see if we're fast we've won the last two races and we've had some genuinely good pace you know some actual good qualifiers as well so i'm hoping to keep that going here at portimao but this of course is a wild card so i don't know what to expect heading into this round all eyes of course on mercedes on george russell to see what they do and yeah hopefully we can pull one out the bag now our first lap is invalid as we uh, get a bit too wide on the track limits out of the right hander so i basically backed off and went for a second push and was matching the lap up until the invalidation on my second attempt kept it clean this time around and we're now going to close out the lap and it's going to be a one minute 14.9 and we go p4 which is less than a tenth off lando in p2 so a good start to qualifying in the top five easy progress into q2 piastri p2 russell setting the pace in the mercedes and hamilton p4 so all the favorites are up there all the big boys are up there and everyone's fighting for top spot into q2 then and uh, we're gonna see if we can start to really get the hammer down and find some real pace i actually do a 50.0 split which is purple but for some reason i wasn't fully happy with the lap it felt a bit scruffy so i chose to back off and go for a second push on my second push lap, I was actually down by a tenth and a half compared to the previous one. So I was going even slower and we kept on losing time. So I chose to actually back off again and I had just enough fuel for one more attempt. And this time you can see we're up by three tenths. This is pretty much a perfect attempt or perfect version of what I was trying to achieve. And across the second split, we actually only go a tenth and a half faster than our first attempt. So in hindsight, my first run wasn't actually that bad. It just felt really bad, but it wasn't slow. It just was a bit scruffy, but it was actually quite effective. Either way, we're going even faster on this run, purple in the middle sector. Uh, with six minutes to go, I'm looking to hopefully finish this run and not have to burn another set of tires. So up to the line we go, 14.9 in Q1. We do a 14.2 in Q2 for P1 and fastest of everyone in the session. And that was it for us. We finished up in that session, retired the car, 
and we finished comfortably P1 by a couple of attempts. Lando P3, and then of course the usual suspects up in the mix as well. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty close one. Then you've got a bit of a gap to the Red Bulls, you know, Perez P7, my new rival, uh, Verstappen P8, and then Piastri Sonoda just getting through. Piastri dropping quite a bit of pace actually uh, in, in the transition from Q1 to Q2. But yeah, we're going to jump into Q3 now. Uh, overclass, but still no rain, there's dry conditions. And we've got a 14-2 to aim for as a banker. And we're going to make our way up to the line. And it's going to be a 14-2 again to Verstappen's 14-1, which out of nowhere in Q2, Red Bull just turned it up. And they've been nowhere all weekend, or pretty much all season, they've been pretty distant. But literally, in Q3, Red Bull just, whatever it was in the new upgrade package, just 30 seconds left in the session. they just literally uh, turned it up to 11. And Verstappen on a 14-1 with the quickest time of the weekend is the new benchmark. So we're going to have to try and improve again. So here we go. Final lap of qualifying. Final attempt. Turn one at the 50. Just before, break, turn in sixth gear, carry some speed. Didn't quite match my best attempt through there. I was a bit conservative and we lost a tenth, which isn't ideal. Trying to push through turn three and we also turn four. We don't really get that time back. As Verstappen sets a 13-8. That's a massive benchmark, and we're now P4 as Piastri and Sainz have moved ahead of us, and other cars have done so. So we're down to P7 right now on a 14-2, so we have to deliver. Right now, we're up by a fraction, but uh, we'll see if we can try and pull some time back, which is exactly what we do through that right-hander as we get a brilliant exit, and we're now a 10th up into the blind overcrest double rights, taking a very wide entry to get a really good exit. And as we plunge down here, we get such a good exit. You see the time we find. We double our advantage and we're now purple in sector two as we look to close out the lap here in sector three, finding a bit more time through that left-hand hairpin. Now through the right, holding it in fourth, getting the power down as soon as possible. And we're going to take a nice tight line here and keep the car as far right as possible. And it's going to gain us a bit more time. Three and a bit tenths up. Is it enough for pole position? Across the line we go. P2 and Verstappen is on pole, which we haven't said that very much this season at all that has come from nowhere and Verstappen delivers in a big big way in qualifying and puts half a second on his teammate in Q3 elsewhere Hamilton only P8 quite disappointing from him Russell P4 and we was a thousandth quicker than Lando Norris so a McLaren 2-3 with Russell behind that could be massive for the race and the championship so yeah guys there is a lot of qualifying and that sets up the race which should be interesting of course starting out in wet conditions also our race starts lately have been insane so that's something to factor in either way it should be fun it's going to be intense and the title is on the line the formula one circus has made its way to the southern coast of portugal this week and is preparing for what i think will be a terrific race here in portimao A lap of Portimao is 2.9 miles long and is made up of 15 turns, nine right-handers and six left-handers. It's been described as a roller coaster with a lot of elevation changes. There's more than one blind summit and the conditions today aren't going to make visibility any better. So drivers are going to have to be on the ball if we're to avoid a safety car here today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Martinez completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Russell, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Leclerc, Hamilton, Norris, Perez, Sonoda, Ocon, Albon, Magnussen, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Theo Porcher, Joe, Sargent, De Vries and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Let's talk about Martinez. Let's talk about Martinez. They need fifth or better to ensure they stay in contention for the championship. Anything outside that, and their fate is no longer in their hands. The key now will be to keep the right mindset. We've seen time and again that things go wrong if they just try to do the minimum. Not necessarily because of the pressure, but because it's different to their usual approach. They'll need to avoid that and stay focused today. Right, here we go. Time for the Portuguese Grand Prix, and we have a lot of rain. 
I'm talking soaking wet conditions for the race. Verstappen is back on pole and to be fair has shown some real strong form this weekend but the key thing George Russell starts behind us in P4. So this is going to be a big big race in the championship fight because if we can outscore George again today possibly win our third race in a row we could take the lead in the championship. It's that simple. It's in our hands. We can make it happen. And it's amazing how this season has completely changed. And we are so fast now. And we're possibly favourites to win the title. It's literally changed in the last three, four races like that. So, yeah, a big, big moment. Anyway, strategy for this one is going to be a presumable one stop, maybe two, uh, depending on the conditions. Uh, looks like we've got a fair bit of rain. So the game is starting on wet. If there'd been two rain icons, I may have considered the intermediate, but I think it's going to be wets for now. Um, so probably a wet into medium probably is going to be the likely strategy for this one. So yeah, fuel wise, I'm going for approximately based off my calculations, I'm doing about 0.5 under the race strategy program gave us just over 47 kg of fuel so i'm doing 46.5 uh with the rain we should save that little bit of fuel and also the two pit stops so yeah should be a good race i'm looking forward to it, it should be chaos hopefully that we get a good start like the last couple of races get p1 off the line and just drive off into the sunset because i think we've got a good pace here so i want to make it count and hopefully it's another boring race and fingers crossed we win albeit with the rain chaos so yeah guys let's get into it like the video subscribe and let's get to work right here we go the most important race start of the season so far. Almost jumped the start. It's a good start though, we jump for Stappen. Russell gets a flyer, but gets boxed in. So we're gonna take P1 into turn one. Now we just have to defend the line into turn three. Oh, lots of understeer. Not a lot of grip right now. Definitely glad we didn't start the Inters. There is not a lot of grip right now, even on the full wet. But P1, crucially, that's exactly what we had to achieve. Russell P3, so he hasn't overtaken Verstappen. Lando a bit further back with a grid penalty. We're going to move the brake bars a bit more to the front to avoid rear really locking. And we're now going to try to adapt to the conditions whilst holding on to a provisional race winning position. Let's see if we can try and pull away here and open up a gap. Russell will be on the chase. Verstappen's been fast all weekend. But I feel confident in my ability as we look to make it three wins in a row. Ooh, a bit of a moment there. Didn't lose that much to be fair. Trying to push and open the gap. Obviously no DRS. But I just want to try and drive away. Rain's getting lighter now, but it's going to take a while for the track to dry out. Okay, full wet seems to be the fastest tyre for now. Okay, so we're already running on dry and track. Although the rain's still coming down pretty heavily. Either way, our next stop will be onto Inters, that's for sure. Oh my god. Oh. That was a big one. Trying to push. That was almost a costly error. Oh, Magnussen out. First retirement, no safety car though, so nothing changes as we... Tire situation is an interesting one, but I think the right call is to stick with what we've got for now. Yeah, we're going to keep on going. Pace is decent. I'm able to keep a stab on there. Russell doesn't quite have the pace, which is big, big news. At least on this tire, maybe things might change in the inter or the dry. But I'm yet to put together a clean lap, if I can just a clean lap we should be in the level 29s and that should be a good place to start to open a gap the rain has now eased off we're now in light rain conditions i reckon it's inters i'll give it another lap or two and just see if others choose to respond but the track is drying up quite quickly so we'll stick with it for now but i'm sure that it won't take long for cars to start pitting okay now we're starting to open a gap to the cars behind this will make our race for us as we dip into the 29s Still no sign of inches, but I would pit if I had a gap. Oh my god. Oof. Big save. Big moment. Oof. Lost a couple of seconds there. Rear tires are hot. From that incident last lap, I've been struggling to get the car to drive. 
understood, stopping this lap. I'm just going to go for it. My gut is telling me it's intermediate, so I don't know why I'm waiting. Part of the reason why my tyres are overheating. So we're going to just box, even if we're giving away the lead. I think it makes the right logical option. I think we're going to still keep the lead. The longer the AR stay out, the worse for them, but better for us. So we're just going to do it, pull the trigger, and get on the inter. Right, away we go. Perez actually pits to be fair, so we'll see what tie he goes for. There might be a sign that he's also thinking intermediates, and he does. So there we go. We've timed that perfectly. We should be fine. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Going to rejoin just in front of the Vries here. We've got way more grip. Look at that. Just walking past. I could have peered like three laps ago, but I really thought, you know, we'll see if the AI pull the trigger, and that's the telltale sign that we definitely have to peer. I had a lead. A comfortable lead, but I lost the, the gap, which isn't ideal. So we had to cover ourselves from potential undercut. We've done the right thing here. Both Mercedes stay out. Okay, that's massive. Lando stays out as well, which I do not understand. So we're going to get a massive undercut of some of these guys. The Sappens in the pits right now. We're going to be comfortably out ahead. Same move as last lap. We're just going to get the cut back here and let the Inters do the work. I mean, look at the grip difference. Actually insane. And we'll be onto Albon very, very quickly. We'll probably get a run out of here, to be fair. Into the next section. Look at that. Look at that grip difference. Straight up the inside. Using the grip. Yellow flag. Oh, hang about. Hold the phone. I think it's an Aston Martin. I think it's Piastri. I think it's Oscar Piastri. Debris there on track. Oh, it's Leclerc. Leclerc out the session. But Lando's going slow, so I think Lando got damage. Maybe Lando got damage in the process. Lando's in the pits. Lando in the pits. Either way, everybody's in now for the inters. So we take back P1. We've increased that gap over Verstappen. So, normal service resumed. And now we wait for the dry tyres to arrive. Well, the Mercs have lost out big time with that strategy call. And the worst thing is they stack their cars, so Hamilton's a long way back. What's up, though? Setting the pace on the Inter. Oh my god. Oh. This track is deadly, man. Snappy. Definitely punishes mistakes if you get a bit careless. Snap and moves the goalposts. So he's sticking with me to be fair. Verstappen took a great pace here. The up red wall upgrades are working well. Perez is also up to P5 now, recovering quite nicely. Right, the rain has stopped. So it won't be long now until we're on dry tyres. Okay, the stewards have now enabled DRS. DRS is now online. Okay, interesting. Earlier than usual, so surely dry tyres will not be far away. But the track still seems pretty wet. So we'll stick with it for now. Okay, I've got a brand new race strategy on your MFT if you want to go and check it out. There it is. We might just take one more lap. I think the track's still a bit on the wet side. I will let this happen deal with the cold tires and you know the wet track. I've got a bit of a margin, so we'll we'll keep we'll keep pushing, we'll stick with it for one more lap. I reckon it's worth it. Max does pit. The track has dried out really quickly. In just the last half a lap or so. Puddle's completely gone pretty much. Luckily the intermediate still works in this F1 game. Even in last game as well. The inter works on a dry track so we won't bleed too much time. So we will box. Okay, be careful. We think you're gonna start losing some tire grip anytime now. We don't currently have the data for that request. That was almost a mistake, setting the hard tires there. Right into the pits we go. Nice and easy. Should be okay. I don't think this happened. Would have gained enough to undercut. He's probably gained a couple of seconds, but I would have gained a bit when he was in pit exit. I reckon we'll be just ahead by about a second. That's my estimation. 2.2. Good stop. We're going to be on cold tires though, so we're going to have to deal with it. All right, here comes Max making his way up the hill across to start finish. It will be close, but we'll be out ahead. Not a lot of grip on pit exit. There's Verstappen. Closer than I thought, actually. He's going to be right on us. 
on wall mediums. Defending the inside straight away. Oh, understeer. As we drift off. Max will have the RS. So we'll defend the inside. Got to move the brake bias to the back. My fronts are locking. Right, there we go. We've weathered the storm just about. We'll see if we have pace in the dry. This is now the big mystery. And also, if we can open up a gap and break the RS with Verstappen, that's going to be also really, really key. So let's see what we can do here. Verstappen half a second behind. Let's see what sort of straight lines people are looking at. Not too bad. We're actually pretty decent, to be fair. Max is gaining, but it's not enough. He's going to run out of straight. So we're going to be okay. Decent lap, wasn't quite able to break the RS on Verstappen, but we've got a healthier margin as we are going to set a new fast lap of the Grand Prix, but that's going to be pretty much every lap now as the track is faster. But we have got decent pace in the dry. Okay, I think I've broken the RS on Verstappen, using a bit of battery to lock it in and make sure it's guaranteed. But we can win this race, we've got pace in all three conditions. The Intel is probably our worst, but we're wet in the dry. We are rapid. Mm. Moment again. Verstappen isn't going away. It seems to be getting a bit stronger. We're just about keeping him out of DRS range, but only just. Russell up to P4. Overtaking Carlos Sainz. Cool chair might give Verstappen DRS here. Unless he gets out of the way for both of us. No, he's going to give Verstappen DRS. On to the last lap then. I think Max would be close enough though, even with the RS. We've been managing the gap well and we've just kept him out of the RS at all times. Verstappen trying to push on. The DRS zone is quite short. It starts quite late, so I don't think he's going to benefit from DRS. We've got plenty of charge in case he does get close. Russell P4 in the end. He's chasing Piastri, but he's going to run out of time and lap. So another race where we're going to outscore Russell. It's the three-peat, three wins in a row, and this now gives us a championship lead. It's a performance that our Portuguese Grand Prix winners can be justifiably proud of. And I'm sure there'll be celebrations tonight. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations, and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. I'm gassed, very happy. What a win, another convincing performance and we win from second place on the grid. Good pace all weekend, the qualifying race, wet weather, dry weather, don't really matter. Really good performance. Lando P7 gains a place after starting P8. Still not ideal. Um, Lando could have pit a bit earlier for the intermediates and that would have helped his race, but he was quite away off the next five cars, six cars. So it is what it is. Hamilton gets the extra point for the fastest up of the Grand Prix, but yeah, that's your top 10. Let's look at the standings. That is what we really care about. And you can see we lead the championship for the first time this season. I wanted to maybe try and do a Sebastian Vettel 2010 and not actually the championship at any point and maybe win it in the last race. But still, I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. Out of nothing, we are now leading the championship. And literally, if you go back five races, we had no chance. We was a long, long way back. So, yeah, things have really opened up in a big, big way. And yeah, we're now a point ahead of Russell with three races to go i think or yeah two races to go i know las vegas and abu dhabi remain but i'm not sure there's one more before that either way no complaints absolutely awesome constructors championship 115 behind mercedes we still have a slight chance but 
I still think we're going to regret those points we lost to Lando like, many times this season. Um, if Lando could win a race, if we could get a 1-2 at some point in the last two races, that might help us. But I think uh, it's pretty much done. On the last three races, I don't even know how many races are left, to be fair. But if there's two races left, we mathematically can't catch them. So I'm guessing it's three because there's been no mention from Crofty, but I could be wrong. Either way, guys, what a weekend. The Drivers' Championship is on out of nowhere, and I can't believe it. Like the video, subscribe for more, and we go to the next one, hoping to extend our championship lead to George Russell. Like, subscribe. As always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the channel. Check out the two videos on screen, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, and let's goodbye from me.